Welcome to worship at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. We are gathered by Christ, growing in faith, sent to serve, empowered to witness. Our faith community welcomes all individuals, regardless of race, sex, gender identification, sexual orientation, economic status, age, disability, or family makeup. Child of God, you are welcome here. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Catherine cartwright Nodell, and I'm so glad to be sharing this time with you. Uh, today we continue to celebrate Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leadership, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Well, it's time for all the children to come closer to the screen, if your mom and dad will let you come close. And if you want to, you can have your bowl of water, because Easter is the season of baptism. And one of the things that I really love to do during the Easter season, when I'm at the font so much, is I love to put my hands in the water and to feel the water of baptism. 
you know, I've baptized a lot of babies and even some kids and even a few teenagers and some adults. And always the best part of it for me is being able to take the water with my hand and share the water on someone's head. It's beautiful. So we're going to talk more about Easter today because the story in John's gospel begins the same night that the women at the tomb found the empty tomb and the angel and um, learned that Jesus is risen from the dead. Now, we're in a different gospel story this week than we were on Easter Sunday. So we're going to talk a little bit about how John tells the story. And one of the things you need to know is we have four gospel stories, and each of those tells the story a little bit differently. And if you wonder about that, I want you to think about something really cool that might have happened in your family or with your friends. And everybody who tells the story tells it a little differently, right? It's a little bit differently because we notice different things, different things stand out to us, different things mean things to us where other things might mean more to another person. So every time a person tells a story, it's going to be just a little bit different. And that's what we have in this week's gospel reading. We have the way that John told the story. And John remembers it a little bit differently than Mark does. And so not only were there women at the tomb to go and anoint Jesus for his burial, but there were also a couple of disciples. Instead of one angel, there's two. And, um, and so I just think that that's really interesting and something we should notice, the ways that different people tell the story. And you're going to hear the same thing when you have different pastors who preach the story a little bit differently, too. And sometimes we preach it a little differently year after year after year. But let's take a look at the story today. So it's not morning anymore. The night is falling. But the thing that the story today has in common with the story we told on Easter Sunday was that it began when it was dark. It began when it was dark. And a lot of times, when it's dark, people get to be a little afraid. Do you ever feel afraid in the dark? Sometimes I feel afraid in the dark. And that's OK. That's normal. That's part of what it means to be a person. Well, the disciples were all gathered together in a room, and the doors were locked because they were afraid. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears, almost like magic. He appears. The locked doors and the walls don't keep Jesus out. And you know what? His disciples knew him right away. But one of them wasn't in the room with them. He came later. And they all told him the story. And you know, it's kind of a wild story, isn't it? And so Thomas, he was naturally Hmm, what's the word we should say? He was naturally skeptical. Now that's a big word. And what that means is not quite sure what to believe about it. But here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus wants us all to believe. And so the next week, when they were all gathered together, the doors were still shut, but Thomas was with them that time. All of a sudden, Jesus appears among them again, and he goes right to Thomas, and he shows him his hands. And Thomas knew him right away from his hands. Because his hands still had the marks of the nails from when he was crucified. And even a healed and resurrected Jesus still carried the marks of the cross on his hands. A constant reminder to all of us just how much Jesus loves us. Let's have a prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your love, and we are so excited to keep celebrating the season of Easter. And we thank you that you love us so much that you want each of us to know you and to believe. And we thank you that we still today know you by the marks that you continue to carry in your hands, a sign of love for all of us. 
Amen. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this day, for this life you've given to us to share and to celebrate, and for your love which surrounds and fills all things. We pray that you would bless our gathering this day in this time of sharing this wondrous story of your love for us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The story from John's Gospel today spans eight days. And the eighth day is a code word in the Bible. For those of us who like to study these kinds of things in the Bible, one thing we understand is that any time anything comes on the eighth day, it's a day of new creation. And so the story we have today continues John's account of the Easter story. It begins on the evening of Jesus' resurrection, and then it begins again the following week. So a whole week goes by. One might say, it's today. Because today is the eighth day after Easter. We read this story every year on this Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. And that tells me something really important about it, that there's some treasure deep in the story that we're invited to dig for and to unearth. So I invite you to be open today to whatever treasure God wants to unearth. And I think it's an important story in many ways because we find ourselves in very much the same situation as the disciples found themselves, still sheltering at home for the most part because it's not safe for them to be outside. And like many people who find themselves in dangerous circumstances, they are afraid. And we can certainly relate to that, can't we? Sheltering from a pandemic that's been going on for more than a year. For many, the literal sheltering at home has given way to other ways of sheltering. Masks, distancing, vaccine. The last time we met for worship in the church building was more than a year ago. I don't think any of us have ever experienced anything like this in our lives. And just that this is different from what life is usually like is enough to make a person feel afraid. But then add on to it all of the extra pieces, rising case numbers, variants, difficulty finding available vaccine, financial worries, all of the different pieces of this time in our human history that come together and are woven into this fabric of worry for us. We are journeying through a time when every person on earth is experiencing the same kind of fear. And I think that's an important foundation for our reflections around the story today. Because part of what I understand about this story is that the person of Thomas is an every person character. Every person is appealed to in Thomas's experience. The story opens on the evening of Jesus' resurrection, a continuation of the story that opens early in the morning when two disciples and the women went to the tomb, as John tells it. They are told by two angels that Jesus is risen. The two disciples run back to tell the others, and Mary Magdalene is left alone in the garden weeping. Jesus meets her, calls her by her name, 
and has a message for her to share with the others. But the thing that I think is profound here is that there is an intimate encounter between the resurrected Christ and a person. Today's story is its twin. The first part has to do with the disciples as a group. The second part is an intimate encounter between Jesus and one person. And so we have this understanding that the resurrection is about both the community and the individual. Jesus speaks to both the community and the individual through his resurrection. Sometimes I talk about three Easter's. The Easter we wake up to, which begins in darkness. We rise in darkness, we move out in darkness, trusting in a promise. Then there's the Easter we discover, which is unexpected and surprising and leads us into joy. And finally, there's the Easter that we share. We discover that in sharing the story of the risen Christ, we are taken into a deeper joy because we actually have an encounter with the risen Christ who sends us. This week, I want to talk about three gifts of the resurrection, peace, joy, and life. Gifts that, again, are embodied deeply in the experience of the disciples. Night is falling. They are in Jerusalem and they are afraid. It's dangerous for them to be out of their homes and they've locked the doors. Suddenly, Jesus appears and offers the first gift which he speaks into being, just as God spoke the creation into being. Peace be with you. Immediately, the gift of peace is bestowed on the disciples. Jesus' first word to them as a resurrected life leads them into peace. There's no struggle, there's no decision to be made, it's immediate. It's very much what happens when you unwrap a present and you look inside, you are gifted. The gift is there. You are receiving it and it is yours. Peace be with you. There is a deep, and powerful peace that comes only with the resurrection and it leads to the next gift joy joy is always a gift of resurrection peace leads into joy and joy is immediately theirs and we know that joy is theirs and that they have been transformed by the experience because immediately they begin to rejoice Rejoicing is a response, an expression of the joy that we carry within us. Immediately, Jesus speaks again, offering peace and sending them, that's the Easter we share. He breathes on them. And immediately we remember the God who spoke creation into being, the God who shaped clay and breathed into its nostrils the breath of life and animated the clay, making human beings, living clay, living creatures that are filled with the life force of God himself. So here is life being given, the third gift of resurrection. The disciples are 
utterly transformed in this encounter with the risen Christ. They are transformed by peace, by joy, by life, new life becoming a new creation. This is the beauty and the wonder of what they share as a community encountering the risen Christ. But there's a little wrinkle in the story as we come to discover that one of them is not there. He's not inside the walls. For some reason, Thomas is out in the world. And here's the wrinkle. What about those who aren't included in the first experience? Where does that leave them? And this is where Thomas becomes an every person. Because we might wonder where that leaves us where that leaves those who aren't a part of our fellowship and maybe haven't even heard of the risen Christ. And so we move into the next part of the story. I think Thomas gets a bad rap. We call him Doubting Thomas. And I'd like to cut away that expression of who we remember Thomas to be, who he is almost universally remembered to be in the story. I'd like to help us to look at Thomas a little bit differently and to understand his role in opening up this broad vista of understanding about our own circumstances, how we come to the risen Christ. Because the truth of the matter is, we have the same three Easter's that the women at the tomb did. The Easter we wake up to, the Easter we discover, and the Easter we share. They are ours as well. And we are offered the same gifts of resurrection as the disciples were, the gifts of peace, joy, and life, and the opportunity to be fashioned into a new creation. We too are filled with the life force of God, and that makes us who we are. So we really are not unlike the other disciples. But sometimes, I think it's hard for us to see it and to believe it. Because maybe we did not have the same experience these disciples did. Or maybe we don't see ourselves as having a legitimate experience as someone else does. Or maybe God feels far away from us. Sometimes we look at other people and think that their faith is stronger than ours or their service or their example is stronger than ours. And so often we see ourselves as less. But you are not less. You are everything. And this is what Jesus' encounter with Thomas opens up for him. This understanding that he is everything. One person who is struggling with his experience has account, an encounter with the very same risen Christ. And this risen Christ doesn't scold him for where he is and what his experience is and how he's expressing it. This encounter with the risen Christ invites him into a deeper relationship with Jesus' resurrection. See my hands, which still bears the mark of the cross. Touch them. See my side, which still bears the mark of the spear. Touch me here, Jesus says. This is a close 
and intimate encounter with the risen Christ. One that invites him into a deeper expression of this resurrection life than he's had so far. This incredible encounter opens the way to a blessing for us all. The descendants of Thomas, descendants in the faith. Jesus says, do you believe because you have seen, because you have touched? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. This encounter with the resurrected Christ and with Thomas's experience opens the way for each of us to receive a blessing just for us, even as the community is blessed by the risen Christ. A blessing offered by the hands of Jesus, marked with the nails that he bore in the crucifixion. The resurrection body of Jesus still carries the wounds of his crucifixion. The crucified and resurrected one blesses you and me this day in a holy encounter at home. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Amen. The hymn of the day is Healing in This House. Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, 
who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to a parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority that they may shepherd their peoples in the way of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God. Your mercy you share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, we offer thanks to God for the faithfulness of church members and friends who continue to send their financial offerings to support the ministry of this congregation and, and here in the community and beyond. We are also thankful for the prayers and other forms of support offered. All gifts are appreciated. God bless you for all your support efforts and commitment. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to the suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. This is the body of Christ given for you and for me. This is the blood of Christ 
shed for you and for me. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia! Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia! Thanks be to God. Alleluia! <laughs>